Forum, everyone. It's great to have you with us. Um, we're really lucky tonight to have um, a couple of people that we don't hear from all that often. Um, we've got Dr. Joseph Maroon, um, who's affiliated with the University of Pittsburgh Medical School and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers and a variety of other things that we could talk about. We'll let him talk a little bit more about that. And, and his colleague, Jeff Bost, um, and the two of them have been involved in, in research and surgery and, and uh, care in, in, in regards to neurosurgery and a variety of health conditions over the, over the years. And uh, you've heard me say this before, that uh, we have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to our products and the research behind our products. But I've never had a, I've never been with a company that has a, a scientific advisory board with the, the stature and the caliber of, of people that we have here at Actives. And, uh, and Dr. Maroon and, and Jeff are, are two class A examples of that. So we're glad to have them tonight. Now, generally speaking, when we uh, um, ask Dr. Maroon and, and Jeff to speak with us, um, we um, often talk about uh, link and butyric acid because some of you know that um, when I first met them, they were familiar with butyric acid, having looked at it in terms of research um, because as in, in the field of neurosurgery, they're often removing tumors and, and uh, having to deal with cancerous conditions. And so they looked at butyric acid. So they were very familiar with it. Um, they're all, all, also very familiar with curcumin for some of the same reasons, and they've utilized uh, that and did a lot of research. But tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. I asked them to, to talk about um, arrow. Um, and um, interestingly, when I sent them the ingredients a couple of weeks ago of, of arrow, they got back. You might remember that uh, Dr. Maroon was on GNC's uh, National Scientific Advisory Board for, for years, and, and they both recognized the ingredients. They were familiar with the ingredients and, uh, and have, a, have a lot to say about it. Um, they're both very, very uh, much into personal fitness, and so they know the benefits of a healthy lifestyle and, and a healthy weight. And then along the way, uh, they're also going to tie in the, um, how our trivecta of genomics, Optimend, and Link also tie into a healthy lifestyle and work in with, work with uh, what we're doing with, with Arrow as well. So on that note, thank you gentlemen for joining us. It's great to have you. Um, I don't remember, uh, Jeff, you told me, but I don't remember who is going to go first. Um, <laughs> Dr. Maroon's going first. Uh, I'll yeah. wanna run the slides for now. All right. All right, great. Thank you, Joe. It's great to have you with us. Well, thank you, David. It, it really is a great pleasure to share our experiences and observations with with you and your associates and, and the distributor people throughout the United States. And uh, we're going to talk about, Jeff, if you want to put up the first slide. Yes, David, we're... can I have the screen? A Angie's going to give it to you right now. Yes, you, you are good to share. Okay. There we go. And uh, there you, there you go. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm sure you, most of the people looking at this, look at healthy weight, a goal you can achieve, and I can just see people in the audience saying, "Sure, uh, no, no question about it," and. As a neurosurgeon for the last 30 years or so, uh, I've, take care of, I, I've taken care of many patients with the consequences of not having a healthy weight and, and the problems of being overweight, diabetes, uh, and uh, the various complications associated thereof with macular degeneration and and as people know, the most common cause of blindness, amputations, and uh, kidney transplantation is sugar is diabetes. And the most common cause of diabetes, of course, is injudicious weight gain and uh, and obesity. And I, I recall the the dictum of the Greek philosopher Aristotle, who said, "In all things, seek the mean between extremes." And obviously with weight, uh, it's very difficult thing to do. And we're, and we're not going to 
uh, proselytize on how difficult it is. Uh, but we're going to share with you some, some facts and hopefully with cognitive awareness, it's enough to motivate individuals to really look at their diet, maybe in a different way, and, uh, and see where they can improve. You know, I, I tell people that my goal in life is to die young, but as late as possible. And to do that requires a rather, rather strict adherence to what you ingest and what you put into your body. So uh, slide, Jeff. So what are the consequences of being overweight? Well, as we know, it's an epidemic in the United States now. Two thirds of Americans are overweight or obese and more significantly or just as significantly, the incidence of obesity in adolescents and in children is, is really marked. It's 30, 40% now. And with the pandemic, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, it's contributed to it in a very deleterious fashion. The cost of this in healthcare dollars is monstrous and uh, diet related heart disease, stroke, cancer, and diabetes, all related to poor diet, kill the most Americans in the top, the top forms of, of lethality in the country. And uh, if, if people would walk 35 to 40 minutes a day, it would reduce the incidence of diabetes by up to 40%. Just think of that one thing and the consequences of that in terms of health as well as healthcare dollars. Slide. So believe me, I know it's not easy and I'm going to tell you a, a little personal story in just a few minutes about the weight that I put on, how I lost it and, and the motivation and, and the way I've been able to keep it off for, for quite a few years. It's tough, it's hard. So we need fuel. And also there's an emotional dependence on food. It's like uh, clearly food addiction is known to everybody listening to this. When we're down, we're depressed, uh, we eat particularly carbohydrates, which increases our serotonin levels, our dopamine levels, and we feel good. And clearly, as I mentioned, an unhealthy weight leads to the common diseases of aging, hypertension, high cholesterol, and uh, if you lose, lose even a few pounds, it can be a big help. And there are some supplements that we're going to discuss that can assist with this task. So the hunger drive is obviously the, the mean survival drive. We need to eat to keep our bodies fueled. And nowadays we have access 24 hours uh, a day, seven days a week to whatever food we want. And the worst type of food is the processed food that food companies market to us in an incessant fashion. Uh, and, and the cereal that's, ma that's marketed to our kids, very high in sugar, salt, fat. All of these things uh, are because of the hunger drive to survive that we have slide. So what is it typically that the Western diet is composed of? Well, carbohydrates, 46 to 48%, protein, 16 to 15%, fat, 34%. So we know that sugar, fat, uh, and salt are clearly things that we become addicted to because we feel good, they taste good. But look at this number that was astounding to me. 200 years ago, before processed food and accessibility that we have, the average person consumed two to three pounds of sugar per year. Now we eat an average of 152 pounds of sugar per year. I mean, the average uh, soft drink contains 10 to 12 spoonfuls of sugar, teaspoonfuls. And some people drink two to three cans, even more a day, uh, which contributes to this uh, huge increase 
in, in the sugar that we eat. And, and we're gonna talk about the consequences of that to our body, slide. So what, what happens when we consume excess sugar? Well, if you reach down to your abdomen while I'm talking now and you, you pinch your belly, just like I'm doing, you'll, you'll feel fat tissue, normal adipocytes, which contain fat, which are part of our body. We need them uh, and uh, it's part of life. But when we consume excess sugar, it's broken down into polysaccharides that are stored in the adipocytes or the fat cells. And they get bigger and bigger and multiply and pretty soon we're overweight, which contributes to the metabolic syndrome of hypercholesterolemia, hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, hypertension, et cetera, and obesity. So what's the danger of obesity, of being over our, significantly over our normal BMI? The problem is it relates these fat cells that are, that are plugged full of sugar and carbohydrates are like a splinter under your fingernail. So what happens, ladies and gentlemen, if you get a splinter under your fingernail, what happens to your finger? It gets red hot, tender and swollen. That is the body's innate immune response to protect you. It's an inflammatory response, it's inflammation. Well, when we consume excess sugar and calories, this inflammation releases agents in our blood called cytokines. And when it's from fat, it's adipokines. And these agents are the same agents that respond to the splinter under our finger to cause the red hot tender swollen. But what happens, this inflammation occurs within our arteries and also within our brains. And this inflammatory response is the common genesis of cancer, heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, all related to inflammation which our diet is absolutely contributory to. So, slide. Dr. Maroon, if I can just interrupt you there, this group is very familiar with the concept of oxidative stress, which is also in that inflammatory cycle, right? Uh, absolutely. Causes, causes oxidative stress, which causes more inflammation. So um, all of these things have a bearing on, on some of the things that they're familiar with. But please go yeah, ahead. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, oxidative stress, which affects the mitochondria, which make the ATP, which is the energy or fuel that powers all of our cells and all of our bodies is compromised with oxidative stress. And it's important to understand what happens if let's say we eat a candy bar at four o'clock in the afternoon when, when we get a little hungry. Well, there's a glucose spike. Uh, our sugar, blood sugar goes up very precipitously. And then it declines the same way and actually goes below the normal blood sugar, which prompts insulin to be release, released and, and prompts us again to want more food. So it's a, a cycle that goes on that, uh, that drives our hunger more to get more fixes, if you would, with carbohydrate, fat, salt, and leads to a, a, a crescendo of, uh, of deposition of excess calories in our fat and obesity. Slide. So as a, as a brain surgeon, if you would, I'm, I'm very conscious about what things affect the brain. Uh, as we know, Alzheimer's disease is a, the most prevalent form of dementia as we get over 60, 65, 70. And so we also know that Alzheimer's disease is markedly elevated in patients with diabetes. So that there's a relationship between excess glucose, hyperglycemia and brain shrinkage. Your brain actually loses brain cells with constantly elevated blood glucose levels. 
There's a reduced blood flow to the brain, particularly in the area of the hippocampus, which is an almond-like structure in the temporal lobes of our brain that subserves memory. It's the repository of memory, which is first affected in Alzheimer's disease. And uh, with reduced metabolic activity due to reduced blood flow, again, this crescendo of, of peaks and valleys and insults to the brain occurs with some atrophy subsequently. Slide. So this pandemic ha has been an incredibly stressful situation for virtually everybody, not only in, in our country, but in the world. So how does this input into what we're talking about tonight? Well, we're all remote working. I'm on my computer in my home today. Uh, I've been on five Zoom calls, sitting here, doing this, doing that, not moving, hardly getting up. There's oftentimes feeling of isolation, trouble staying motivated, and clearly an alteration in the work life situation that I'm usually accustomed to. And we're gonna talk about burnout in just a minute, overworked, overcommitted, uh, overstressed, and the difficulty in maintaining healthy eating habits. The easiest thing for me to do is to go into the kitchen and uh, grab something out of the fridge to make me feel good and, and, and keep going with false energy, so to speak. And also the physical activity level is markedly reduced. So stress is a major contributor to weight gain. And I suspect there's, there's very few people on this call tonight that are not under a significant degree of stress, whether it's from homeschooling your children for the last year, uh, not being able to go to work like you usually do, and, and all of the stresses that lead to depression, anxiety, which also affects what's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The hypothalamus is a small structure in the brain just above the pituitary gland between the eyes and back that controls the regulation of the pituitary gland, how much hormonal regulation and, and release occurs. One of the hormones that gets released with stress is cortisol. Excessive cortisol, prolonged elevation is neurotoxic to the brain. It literally destroys cells in the brain, particularly in the hippocampus. It also contributes to weight gain and deposition of adiposity uh, and further fuels the depression and anxiety. So that uh, we, we must control stress for many different reasons. And as we say here on this slide, slide. So, a few years ago, I, I wrote this book, Square One, A Simple Guide to a Balanced Life. And I'm going to tell you a brief story of, of why I wrote it, but uh, I experienced myself the classic features of burnout, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, depression, low sense of personal accomplishments. And, and what many people may be thinking right now, I have no time for my personal life, my health, my kids, my husband, my job, I don't know if I can handle it much longer. Well, in this book, I, I really do provide a simple guide to a balanced life, uh, a, a simple formula for attaining balance. And this can be obtained at maroonsquare1.com uh, at a very reduced rate at this time compared to Amazon, uh, if you're interested. Slide. So. This is a hugely significant slide. Most of modern life is geared toward attaining success, power, prestige, money, status. Only after it is attained does its hollowness became painfully aware. And this is from a book uh, by, by John Kegg, a professor of history at the University of Massachusetts. And I was very successful early on in my career. I attained everything here. I was very successful, power, position, I had enough money, uh, status. And then within the course of a week, uh, I, I was also president, uh, appointed head of neurosurgery at the University of Pittsburgh Presbyterian Hospital, 
a consultant to the Pittsburgh Steelers and doing all sorts of successful things. Slide. And then in the course of a week, my, my father died at age 60 of a heart attack. My wife left with our two kids in the middle of winter, uh, justifiably. And I had to quit nurse surgery. So one day, slide, I, I was doing brain surgery on awake patients, working in the eloquent areas of their brain. The next day, I was living in this farmhouse in Wheeling, West Virginia, alone by myself and, and wondering what was going on. How did this happen? Slide. And my father bequeathed to my mother this dilapidated truck stop in Wheeling, West Virginia, where I worked for the following year, filling up 18 wheelers, flipping hamburgers, and trying to figure out how in the world did I end up in this situation? Slide. And, and this slide summarizes it very well. The life of every man is a diary in which he means to write one story and writes another. His humblest hour is when he compares the volume as it is with what he vowed to make it. You know, what, what in each of you listening to this, what did you write in your diary? What story did you mean to write with your life? And, and how does it compare now? Well, I didn't go through so many years of at residency and medical school to work in a truck stop, slide. And I had no idea how to get out of this terrible depression until the banker who held the mortgage on the truck stop called me one day and said, Joe, let's go for a run. I was literally 20 pounds overweight, pathologically depressed and couldn't walk up a flight of stairs without being short of breath. And I think he wanted me to go for a run to see if I'd be around long enough to pay off the mortgage on the truck stop, which his bank held. But regardless, I made it down to this track and I made it around four times. And uh, I said, never again, I was exhausted. But that night was the first night I slept in months and a little light went off and I went down the next day and I did a mile and a quarter, then a mile and a half, and then two, three, four, and pretty soon the neurotransmitters in my brain started to get realigned without drugs, without serotonin uptake inhibitors, without Xanax, uh, without Zoloft, slide. And I started to, I read about triathlons and I started to cross train. I learned to swim, I got a bike, I learned to run again, slide. And I subsequently, uh, started participating in triathlons and uh, participated in Hawaii at the Hawaiian Ironman triathlon, a, a uh, 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike and a marathon. And I've subsequently done that five times in Hawaii. This is the swim start, uh, quite a spiritual experience actually, wondering if you're ever gonna finish such an endeavor. Uh, and uh, I was able to finish uh, you have 17 hours to get off the track. I made it in 16 for the last time I did it a few years ago, but slide. But the point of this whole thing, and go back one, Jeff. Uh, the point of this is not to boast in any way whatsoever. I, I, was su I had suicidal ideation. I, I wanted nothing to do with life. I was overweight, obese, lethargic, feeling worthless. But that one run around the track turned my entire life around. I learned subsequently the importance of diet. I changed my diet. I became clearly more spiritual, more mind mindful, more aware of what I was about, what the purpose of life is. It's a life of purpose. So what's your purpose in life? And, and I put more balance into my work and my family. Uh, slide. So uh, to get on a bit, <laughs> the other thing that occurs with age and with, with triathlons and, and exercise and just getting older is osteoarthritis. So I, I developed some joint pain and I became very aware of, you know, what can I take to help my joints when I'm training like this? 
And I discovered various supplements, everything from vitamin D3 uh, to uh, fish oil, and also a product uh, that I take daily, every day, called Optimend. And why Optimend? Curcumin, Boswellia, and zinc are actually peer-reviewed, uh, in many peer-reviewed, scientifically-based journals, are excellent natural anti-inflammatories. They reduce the inflammatory process that occurs. Like I said, when you get a splinter under your finger, that same thing happened to my knee, my shoulders at times from swimming. And I found this product to be absolutely, uh, for me, essential uh, to reduce the inflammation that comes from what I tend to do is overuse activities. Slide. So besides supplements, uh, you want to reduce your salt, uh, eat more nuts and seeds, try to avoid processed meats as much as you possibly can. They're high in salt, saturated fats, and poisonous nitrates. Uh, and consume seafood and omega-3 fatty acids or fish oil, and clearly as many vegetables and fruits as you can consume, and totally avoid sweetened beverages that are poisonous in terms of their toxicity when overconsumed. And also I would add to that uh, the artificial sweeteners, which markedly affect your microbiome and affect the species in your, in your gut that modulate your blood sugar as well. So what's the glycemic index that you should be aware of? The glycemic index is simply a number from zero to 100, with sugar glucose being 100 in terms of the spike in your blood sugar two hours after you consume these particular foods. So as you can see, as well as I, in terms of the grains, you wanna eat the least glycemic, the lowest glycemic index uh, products, wild rice, uh, beans, brands, asparagus, everything that you see here that you know you should do, but this gives you the, uh, the, the scientific reason why, uh, because of the modulation in your, in your blood sugar. Slide. So what's a healthy diet consist of? Well, you want to eat good fats, extra virgin oil, avocado, flaxseed, lean protein as much as possible, complex carbohydrates, an apple at three or four o'clock instead of a candy bar. And, and then the superfoods, blueberries, as you see there, all contribute to the health of your microbiome, which is also enhanced by Link, a Jeff product that Jeff is going to talk about, which, which enhances the butyrate formation in, and, in, and protects the mucosal lining of your gut to prevent the leaky gut syndrome that leads to autoimmune diseases. So the things you see in the superfoods are all those that uh, contribute in a different way to your overall health. Slide. And, and with this, I'm going to lateral the ball to my, my friend and cohort, uh, Jeff, to finish out some of the other products that we both use routinely and the reasons we use them. So Jeff, your turn. Thank you, Dr. Maroon. And uh, thank you everyone for being here tonight. It's exciting to see as I look at my Zoom screen, all the people that are joining us. So uh, I hope you will, uh, were able to listen to Dr. Maroon and I'm going to go over a few of the products uh, from Actives as well as uh, a little more detail on weight loss and some of the things that you can do. Um, genomics, uh, Dr. Maroon showed us the superfoods earlier, but these are super ingredients in the fact that they are uh, do counter oxidative stress that can occur. Dr. Maroon, when he's on the uh, fields of the lava fields of Kona, Hawaii, I've been very privileged to be there with him, but not running. I've been sitting back uh, waiting for him to finish. Uh, so I don't have the same oxidative stress that he has, but certainly during your exercise, we know that that generates a lot of oxidative stress and a product like genomics uh, can reduce that. The ingredients you see on the left, rosemary, uh, gingerol, and uh, lutadine all work to decrease uh, oxidative stress by activating antioxidants. So 
this is an important product for those that exercise and those that don't in the sense that our diet and other things that we do, stress can certainly increase oxidative stress. So what we're talking about as far as weight loss, and this is intuitive for most people, is the idea of, of energy balance. We have to have the amount of calories we need for the energy we're expelling, but if we're not using the amount of energy, uh, then we shouldn't be eating the calories and they get stored if you eat too many. So the idea of weight loss, of course, is to exceed your uh, calories out versus your calories in. And it's a simple equation. You can see it here in the middle. Uh, certainly not simple to follow. Uh, we eat high calorie foods. And I think uh, there's, a, there's uh, calculations eating one candy bar, you have to run like five miles to burn it off. So the amount of calories packed into small processed foods are tremendous as far as the amount of energy they contain. But we can't always find time to exercise. And this is where uh, the things we can take, for example, supplements and certain foods may come into, uh, into play. Uh, there are many reasons we can't exercise, whether it's due to work or some other impairment. And yet we still uh, want to burn some energy and we want to lose weight. And that the idea of how to do that is some of the uh, thought process behind the Aero product, the me uh, metabolite, uh, metabolism boost that occurs with that. So the first one, of the first ingredients, which we were very excited to see was a fiber prebiotic, which feeds the gut. Uh, you're all pretty well versed in links and we're gonna talk about that. But the idea of having a, a gut function and digestion in our diet is really key to uh, some of the things that we're gonna talk about with weight loss. Fiber also gives you a sense of fullness, uh, which can decrease the hunger uh, that it occurs with foods that are digested very quickly. Uh, and we also know that uh, fiber can lower cholesterol levels, which is a health risk to have elevated cholesterol levels. And these are some of the foods that uh, you know of that uh, sometimes they're available, sometimes they're not, but having a, a, a supplement uh, of fiber is very important as a quick source and an easy source to get the fiber you need. And again, this is soluble fiber in the sense that it's used by our gut and helps us uh, to uh, feed our microbiome. So in the Lynx product, there is a, a, pro, a prebiotic there and that prebiotic uh, feeds the gut uh, as we talked about. And that's important because uh, butyric acid obviously is providing the gut additional energy for this digestive and energy producing product. Uh, we know butyric acid can decrease inflammation it enhances vitamin uh, absorption, increases BDNF, which we'll talk about here in a minute, and other neurotransmitters. It also is important for heart health and brain function. Uh, there's also B12 in the product, which is we know is an energy source. So they're, they're complementing certainly one of our uh, existing products in the fact that Arrow provides also uh, a um, fiber source for our microbiome. So what are we talking about as far as foods or supplements that can actually burn calories? And that's the concept of thermogenesis, the idea of something that can uh, accelerate the metabolic process to burn calories beyond what the calories they are that you're consuming. So that's really the key above and beyond the calories that you're consuming. And as you can see here, our calories that we get them in many different sources through carbohydrates, fats, proteins, but we also wanna expend calories. And so when you consume something that's therm thermogenic, you're actually uh, burning more calories than you're consuming. And it's a trick, obviously, not every uh, food product can do it, but there are certain fruit food products and supplements that are thermogenic. They actually increase the metabolic rate. Uh, they increase um, uh, actually our temperature if it was uh, closely uh, monitored as well. So caffeine is one of the most common ones we're aware of. Caffeine is, it does a great job of increasing uh, energy uh, usage. Uh, it burns twice as much fat uh, when you consume it. It allows people to exercise longer in scientific studies. Uh, caffeine increases our metabolic rate as well. Caffeine can burn extra calories. In one study, 100 milligrams of caffeine 
is able to burn an extra 150 calories. Uh, so we know that caffeine is important as a thermogenic agent. The types of caffeine though are important. Garana is a dietary supplement that has caffeine in it, but generally speaking is a lot milder in that it's absorbed slightly slower and its release is slightly slower so that it doesn't give you that buzzing effect or anxiousness or insomnia that can occur. So that product is, or that ingredient rather is an arrow and is both thermogenic as well as a milder source of caffeine than other, other sources that are available. Uh, we also have uh, the green coffee fruit, uh, which is available uh, in the product. This provides us with something that Dr. Maroon has talked about many times in the past. And as a neurosurgeon is very important, that's BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor, which is basically um, miracle grow for our brain cells. It helps stimulate the formation of new brain cells increases connections between brain cells. Uh, without it, our brain doesn't grow. Uh, and we need our brain to continue to develop as we get older from birth to death. Uh, the old saying that we only have so many brain cells and they die off is not true. So BDNF is that special hormone that can produce additional brain cells as we, uh, as we throughout our rest of our life. And it just so happens that the this product can also increase BDNF. In, in scientific studies, it was able to increase BDNF almost 150% compared to the control values. They also have other chemicals in here which can increase uh, 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 polyphenols, which are antioxidants as well. Uh, the bitter orange is a very interesting product. Uh, it has uh, synephrine in it, which is a natural uh, ephedrine-like product. You've probably heard of the word ephedrine in the past. Ephedrine was a, uh, was a bad word a number of years ago in the United States due to its uh, side effect of increasing heart rate and causing uh, what, what many thought were heart attack type symptoms. Uh, this is not the same substance, although it has similar effects in that it increases metabolism. So it's a safe product. It's a natural product. It's not a man-made stimulant and it can also increase metabolism. Just taking this product, uh, this ingredient daily is able to burn off 65 uh, more calories per day. So add that to exercise, add that to another uh, thermogenic uh, product. And you have, uh, again, in the Aero product, a very powerful uh, uh, product to increase weight uh, loss. And the last uh, is a very interesting product as well. This is an ingredient, also an arrow. Uh, chromium is a natural mineral, uh, but interestingly, it's critical for the regulation of insulin. Dr. Mearns talked frequently about the idea of blood sugar spikes and how that pumps more insulin in our body and that insulin drives us to be more hungry. Well, if you can regulate or smooth out the insulin spikes, you have something and that's what chromalin does. It helps balance our blood sugar to stop, stop the spiking that it can occur. Chromalin uh, uh, mixed with uh, or uh, combined with B12 is in the Aero product. And it again, helps balance blood sugar, stopping those spikes, reducing appetite uh, uh, cravings and can aid in weight loss. So as you can see here, all the different ingredients I just went over, or in the New Arrow product. Uh, every single one of them individually is an excellent product, but together uh, makes this really an outstanding uh, a product for actives. And I would strongly encourage you to try it. Uh, it, it. It works. We just had an earlier testimonial from one of our participants that said they took it for a week and already lost some significant amount of weight. So I think based on the ingredients, this product uh, should work extremely well. So in summary, and we're going to have questions after this as well, and uh, David, I believe, is going to lead that. But in summary, weight gain and obesity is now the most common disease-producing condition in humans. And we see this in healthcare every day. There are significant consequences, including early death, stress, alterations in blood sugar, our diet of excessive sugar and unhealthy fats, processed food, lack of exercise adds to our weight problem. There is a role for dietary supplements 
in reversing uh, this obesity crisis. And we just have to work through it. And I think the uh, advisory board and David and the scientists that have worked on this new product have really put together the best ingredients uh, that we know of to help you and your clients uh, do better at weight loss and hopefully will improve their health as well. So we're gonna stop here. And uh, if any questions, uh, David, I think you're gonna moderate that at this time. Yes, thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Dr. Maroon. Um, you know, just a great job of not only explaining, you know, the importance of, of, of obtaining and maintaining a proper weight and, and living a healthy lifestyle, but also how the ingredients in Arrow work to help us do that. And, and I also really appreciated how you tied that in with what we call the trifecta of, of OptiMend, Link, and Genomics. And, um, and it really is intended to be an overall umbrella of, of health, healthy benefits that people can use to, to achieve a number of, of desired health benefits in their lives. Um, so one of the things before we open it up for questions, you may have noticed something in the presentation that maybe had, had escaped you. We um, added some ingredients to uh, Link and Optimend, uh, primarily driven um, as we are prepared to go into Columbia. And Columbia has an interesting regulation that says that all formulas that seek to be approved as, as nutritional supplements have to contain a vitamin or a mineral, regardless of intended benefit. It's kind of a strange regulation. We've not encountered it in any other country in the world. And so what we've done is we, we actually consulted with members of the advisory board to say, okay, if we have to put a vitamin or a mineral into these formulas, what would be good complementary ingredients. And you can see by the explanation that Dr. Maroon and Jeff provided as to why we added in the case of Link, vitamin B12, and in the case of Optimand, uh, zinc. So uh, for some of you that said, hmm, where did that come from? I don't remember um, talking about that before. That's, that's that part of the story. The other thing to notice is that both Dr. Maroon and Jeff talked in great detail about the benefits of fiber. And, um, and, and fiber coming in the form of, you know, of well, various ingredients in, in link, we have it in three forms. Maybe you weren't aware of that. We have deglycerized licorice, we have inulin, and we also have glucomannan. And all of those are effective to help feed the friendly, um, the, the friendly bacteria or the probiotics and provide food and, and so that they can provide the, the benefits that they, uh, the byproducts that we use as such as short chain fatty acids and whatnot. In the, in the case of Arrow, it, they're there for a couple of reasons, to do the same thing, to feed those probiotics, but also they serve to provide a feeling of fullness. Um, so, the, so the brain says, okay, I'm fine. I don't need to eat anymore. Um, they also, as, as uh, Jeff mentioned, aid in proper nutrient absorption. And if you really think about it, as, as Dr. Maroon talked about at the very beginning, the, the only reason the body even wants to eat food biologically is for energy to stay alive and to obtain the nutrients, the essential nutrients that, that, that our cells need to function correctly. And, um, and so when our brain says, okay, we've received enough of those nutrients, we don't need to keep on eating. And yet we trick it. We trick it with these other processed foods and other things that aren't really providing nutrition. And so the brain's like, well, I haven't got my nutrients. I guess you need to keep on eating and, 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 and tie that into the pleasure centers that are also uh, impacted by, by the sugar, salt, and fat that Dr. Maroon talked about. Then we get into a vicious cycle. So these ingredients, including fiber um, in various forms, are meant to kind of break that chain. So you may have noticed in the presentation that Arrow works in three ways. One, it produces that feeling of satiety, of fullness. So the brain tells you, I don't need to eat anymore. It also creates, it does that by virtue of better nutrient absorption as well, as I mentioned. It serves to regulate blood sugar. So you're not having those cravings and, and, um, and those crashes, is, crashes that occur. Um, the fiber also, by the way, affects uh, glin, uh, insulin sensitivity so that, um, that what had been desensitized by, our, by our, our diet is now becoming more sensitive and responding correctly. And then finally, the thermogenics burning calories more quickly and more efficiently. And so that's, that's the basis of that. And uh, at this point, if we, um, I want to indulge um, 
the time a little bit more. We have about 15 or so minutes. Um, I don't think we're past Jeff and Dr. Maroon's bedtime quite yet. So uh, we, uh, we can go forward, but does anybody have any questions? Um, it looks like Christina does. Go ahead, Christina. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. It was awesome. Um, I don't know if I missed at some point in the presentation. Um, I have very, very low tolerance for caffeine. Any other weight loss product that I've tried, um, I couldn't finish the second time I tried to take it because the first time it was always the jittery and my heart was going crazy. And I thought I was going to experience the same with Ira and I haven't. Um, I'm in love, I, but I have that question um, because I have people, someone texted me right now, said, yeah, but um, I might get the jittery, I think is the right word. Um, and I said, no, I haven't had it. So I don't know if you'll get it, but I don't know the reason why not. So Dr. Maroon talked about that a little bit. Do you want to hit that again, Joe? Well, so the question you said, you're overly sensitive to caffeine? But not with this one, yeah. So I want to know, I want but to know not why. with this. Uh -huh. well, well, I guess, um, you know, it, the caffeine in Garan is derived from the seed. So it's a slower releasing caffeine, uh, I believe. And uh, it, it's not a jolt like you get. And also the concentration is not as high as you get in a, a Starbucks uh, double lotta, so to speak, in terms of the concentration. Usually uh, there's 100 milligrams of caffeine per a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee. Pardon me? I don't drink coffee, so. No, I, I know, but people who do can develop anxiety reactions and, and jitteriness, as you said. But with the Garana, since it's coming from a seed, it's a slower release product. And uh, uh, you, you still get a, a stimulating effect, but without the jolt. Jeff, can you comment on that? Yeah, I think the Garana is, is notoriously slow as far as the absorption and the release of caffeine. The second thing is fiber is within the arrow product, which also slows digestion and absorption. So you have two things going on at once. It's almost like the caffeine's being titrated rather than bolused in the sense of a medical term. You're getting it over a slow release uh, period of time and, and your body generally uh, is not reacting to it as you've already testified that you're not feeling that jolt. So I, I think that's, that's one of the great combinations uh, that are put into this product. Thank you. One other quick thing on that is the research also shows that when combined with citrus orangeum or bitter orange, it also has kind of an evening effect um, in terms of, of the additional caffeine that might be involved. So, um, so we're just glad at the end of the day, we're glad that you're not noticing the jitteriness and we're, we're hearing that from other people as well. So that's great, glad to hear it. How about other questions? I can't see everybody at the same time. So if you do have one, take yourself off mute and ask a question. Coco, did you just raise your hand? Yes, I have a question. I hear for some people that one of the ingredients is like artificial flavors and sucralosa. I know there is not a big amount. What is that little amount can affect the digestive system even if it's just, you know, there's no huge amount of sucralose? David, that sounds like we're good one for you. Yeah, there is a oh. small amount and, and and like many things, as I think Dr. Maroon mentioned, um, artificial sweeteners um, can have a, um, a, a bad impact upon gut health as well. Um, we kind of tried to achieve a balance because we didn't want to add sugar, okay? But we also know that you know some of these ingredients, ingredient, it's called bitter orange for a reason. It's kind of bitter. <laughs> and so we had to make it, we had to flavor this drink um, in a sense that it would be palatable to people. So we did add a little bit of, of sucralose uh, in order to achieve that. Um, in terms of the, um, I don't have it right at hand and I can look this up. I think this is important for some people. Some of the flavors we get from flavoring houses that are a combination of natural and artificial and, um, and while we have standards in regards to you know, non-GMO and, and other things, um, we know that some people have some sensitivities. So we, we bounce those ingredients off, um, off the formulators as well. And so the, they have very small amounts, uh, no known toxicity. And, and so far, and, and this is what we anticipated, we didn't anticipate that there'd be any um, um, 
adverse events or side effects that people would notice because we kept those amounts intentionally very low. So that's a good question, Coco. Thanks for bringing that up. Let's see, anybody else? Dave, hi. Hi, Zarina. Well, I have a quick question about like people with a perfect weight or a little below their perfect weight. Um, I would love to try and, you know, use it at least uh, maybe not every day and maybe not the full glass, but would, would there be any cautions for me or I just live and happily with it? Well, I'll, I'll defer to the doctors first and then I'll give you my answer, okay? They, they're the experts here. So Dr. Maroon and, and Jeff, um, if a person is not necessarily trying to lose weight, but likes the energy and the nutritional component, um, is, that a, is that a problem for somebody who's simply trying to maintain weight um, to take a product like this? Is it gonna cause them to lose 10 pounds, 15 pounds uncontrollably and, and uh, go into dangerous territory? No, I don't think so, David. I think the ingredients are all natural ingredients in that. And I think, you know, you're, there, there's a term called homeostasis, where your body is constantly uh, being modulated or regulated to maintain a balance. Uh, and, and I think the ingredients in the product is such that uh, taking it intermittently uh, for a, an energy boost is not going to result in in significant weight loss. Jeff, any other comments? Yeah, I concur. I, I think you have a you have a thermostat, or as Dr. Maroon described, a balance or homeostasis that will maintain what weight you have. The other thing is there is a synergism with the fiber and the Lynx product uh, as far as your microbiome. So I think that's a good thing um, as far as getting more fiber. So I, I don't think it's going to have a, a negative effect. And one thing I would just add on top of that, Zarina, is in regards to all of our products. Um, in fact, frankly, everything that people eat, we should pay attention not only to what we put into our bodies, but how our bodies feel afterwards. Um, that, that goes to, with food, that goes with um, supplements. And as we become more aware of, of how our bodies are reacting, um, you might notice that yes, um, there's an appetite suppressant, uh, a natural appetite suppressant. It's not harsh. It's not going to cause somebody to forget to eat for two days and like, whoa, what happened? I'm starving to death. But but there is a natural appetite suppressant. But I think just like if someone notices, whoa, I'm, I, I probably ate way too much today and I'm feeling a little heavy. Um, if we went, to, if you went too long and you're saying, oh, wow, I got going and I didn't and I didn't eat. I didn't eat some food. I better do that because I noticed my blood sugar is dropping or something. Pay attention to that. But um, but the good news is, as Dr. Maroon said and Jeff, um, there are no harsh um, uh, chemicals or harsh drugs in in this ingredient that are tricking the brain or the body to do things in order to lose weight. I was actually looking today at some ads for a an FDA approved drug for weight loss, um, and at, like many drugs, uh, you know. The, the commercial itself was only about 20 seconds long. The rest of the two minutes was spent on the, um, the side effects and, and were pretty dire than you might get if you t take this. Now, don't get me wrong. Obesity is such a big problem that, uh, that people who, have, who are really in, in bad shape because of obesity, they probably need some pretty strict intervention to get that weight off and get it off quickly. And, and it's probably worth risking some things. But for most people to take a healthier natural approach is much, is much safer. And I don't think you'll notice um, that. Uh, we'll keep an eye on you. you. You keep joining these calls and we'll tell you if we think you're getting too skinny. How's that? <laughs> Love it. Thank you all so much. All right. I had a question if nobody's gonna ask. Um, we had a what is comment the comment from Christina uh, really quick? <clears throat> Sorry. Christina. What is the correct age for a uh, in a a kid to start using it? Start using the, what? Iro. You know there is uh, a lot of obesity in teenagers, and um, so there is appropriate maybe for a 10, 12 years old to start Iro. Doctors. I, I think the idea of, of a 10 or 12 year old, I, I think it has to do more with the uh, maturity level uh, of the person 
rather than their actual age. Um, you know, the, if it's a, still a child in the sense that they're still growing and, and you, have, you have to make sure they have well-rounded diet, the protein and the, all the different uh, parts of the food that we need. Uh, if they're older and they're in their teens, you know, they're generally finished growing or near finished growing, then that's a different person. I think someone 11, 12 is, is a, maybe a little young uh, to try to limit uh, uh, foods per se. Uh, so I, I think that uh, it, that may be a bit young. I, I would agree with you. Yeah, generally speaking, um, you know, our products, while none of the ingredients have been shown to have a toxicity level for children or adults, um, generally speaking, if you look at research, it's always done on adults. There's very little research for these type of products or ingredients on children. And so at the very least, what I would say is that, um, now that said, I can tell you that, you know, children are getting you know, obese. Um, they're consuming lots of sugar. They're co consuming a lot of caffeine. They're doing a lot of things like that. But still, it should be done. Uh, anything to help them lose weight should be done, I, I believe, in, in connection with a, with a healthcare professional. And, and if they're judgment, they felt like it was suitable, then I'd, I'd say, okay, but I, um, but I don't think we'll just leave it to them on their own. So, okay. Did I have I a hear? quick question. And yeah. Christina also has a question as well. So who do you want to go first? <laughs> Let, let's have Christina go first because she had her hand raised uh, first. So Christina. Sorry, I promised two more and that's it. Um, I'm, I, I want to- only, only one more, Christina. No, I'm just kidding, go ahead. I wanna to try to explain the product better in my own words, cause I'm really like loving absolutely everything about it. Um, obviously my own results, but what is the correlation between the deep life dreams that most of us seem to be experiencing when taking IRO? That's one question. And my other question is why do we lose measures first and then the weight? Is it because of the thermogenic effect? Now say the first one, I'm not sure I understood the first one. What was the first okay, so the question? One is, what is the correlation? Why do we have these deep life dreams? Uh, why is this? Why are we sleeping better while taking the product? Oh, I have really. People are supposed to have way more energy, and then you just like collapse and dream. Oh well, actually, I hadn't heard that, so I'm not. I, I'm not equipped to handle that. Any any guesses on that from our, from our medical professionals? What do you think? I, uh, so what, what, what you're saying is after you take the product, you, you have energy, you go full tilt, and then you get tired, and then you're having significant dreams during your sleep that you don't usually have? No, we don't. I mean, I don't get tired. I just go to sleep like any other regular day by my, I don't know if it's called RAM or when I'm sleeping, I'm profoundly sleeping, but my dreams are so alive and so vivid and again I, I see people that are shaking their heads because they're experience, experiencing the same so I want to be able to explain it in my own words to all the people well, that are it, obviously I don't think we have any double blind randomized studies that are going to prove anything here but it sounds like you are enhancing your REM sleep in some way uh, with this product uh, which is when you have the most intense dreams and and just that rapid eye movement sleep so uh, it's a it's an observation that we think uh, we need to follow more closely, David, and yeah, not see how that. common this occurs. Be interesting to do some actual sleep studies if you got to that point where it was a significant situation. I see people shaking their head like they're agreeing with me. I that, read that also, and I've heard a lot. So I'm sure most people like that. Um, I'm thinking so. And then what was the second one? Christina? So um, why do we lose measures first and then oh. wait? Is it because of the thermogenic uh, effect or how can I explain that to my clients? So one of the things that we're experiencing, um, this is, I have heard of this, um, is that people are often noticing a reduction in inches um, before they actually notice much weight loss. Um, in fact, Coco mentioned that, you know, she'd had some to me when I was in Phoenix last week, um, significant reduction in waist circumference um, and um, for example, and not followed ultimately by some weight loss, but, but, the, but the inches came off first. What, again, I have my own thoughts about that, but uh, Jeff and, and Joe, any particular comments about that? I, I, I'm not sure I uh, understand that, Jeff. Other, other than exercise can improve tone, whether that's associated with 
uh, being more active and the muscles underneath becoming more toned. That's something I, you know, possible, uh, but I, I don't know specifically. I'm, al I'm also wondering if because of the fiber, if, um, if, if, you know, they're losing some, some water retention, if there's, from a digestive standpoint, they might be losing some things um, that maybe the increased fiber intake is helping. I, I don't know. That's, I'm speculating myself. But. So the observation is that you're losing circumferential measurements. Your your you go down, but you're not losing weight. I've heard that a lot. And in my case, for, yeah, I'm, I'm smaller, but the weight is kind of the same. But I'm definitely smaller. I, I don't know. So, well, that is, well, that's another thing we'll have to, maybe we'll, we'll contact a bariatric specialist about those type of things because um, that is something I've heard a lot of. It's Just, good observations. I mean, it's things that really yeah. should be looked at, the sleep and that. So you're, you're being astute in your own uh, evaluation. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Sorry, we don't have for you. Good about, result, yeah. not good answers. Okay, Julia, go ahead. Um, I, I had the question for Dr. Maroon in regard to, he had talked about, about artificial sweeteners. And so when you are changing drastically from one aspect to another, what would you recommend? Because some things are just really hard to go cold turkey when, when we're talking about, you know, sweetening something up. So would you suggest honey? Would you suggest agave? What, like, what would you suggest then? Because um, I'm assuming you're stevia. thinking more natural. I, I think stevia, uh, honey, I'd be careful because of the calories with that. And it is sugar uh, and agave. These, these are all natural products that I agree don't taste as good as artificial sweeteners sometimes. But I, I think you really need to, it really becomes very important in terms of the microbiome. And as you know, you have over a thousand species of bacteria in your gut. Each have specific, <laughs> specific functions. And as you know, in, in animals, they've taken, they've taken feces or stool from fat animals, put them in thin animals, and the thin animals get fat, and just the opposite. They take thin animals, put the feces into a fat animal, and they get thin. Maybe that's a new treatment we should look at, David. Uh, <laughs> Well, but, I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get staff. I'm trying to get staff buy-in on that to do it first. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's volunteering on it. So. But but the point is that the when you use artificial sweeteners, it affects those specific species of bacteria that contribute to weight gain or weight loss, uh -huh. and uh, you know it fools the body in a way, and and they're just they're, they're just not healthy for you because of the microbiome effect. So honey clearly is a better choice in very, very mild moderation, stevia uh, and, and agave. I mean, they're all natural things that aren't going to have the deleterious effect of artificial sweeteners. So stevia over truvia then, huh? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to kind of good, better, best because I, I, I've done drastic, I mean, drastic measures in, in very, very mild weight loss and, and even inches. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's a big thing for some people, but for me, it, it's not very much. And so David, I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It is kind of a hunger games type of thing, right? That we're talking about here. So I got the reference. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, thanks everyone. We've now reached, uh, gone past the hour, but uh, this has been, this has been awesome. And I think um, Dr. Maroon and, and Jeff, I speak for all of us saying we need to utilize you more often, not less often. You always do a wonderful job, but we appreciate. Um, and there are a lot of things that you hinted at that we actually could have gone on more and more in terms of the effect of, of, uh, of a healthy weight and a healthy diet upon not only our, <clears throat> excuse me, our physical health, but our emotional health and our, and our, yeah mental health, you kind of hinted at that, Joe, and, and right. that's something that is, and, and square one, we're going to come back to you, and um, I'm wondering, I'm just going to throw this out, I'm going to put, I'm going to put Dr. Maroon on the spot here, but I'm guessing that if we bought a bunch of these to use as a promotion uh, to, to get them out into the field, we might even get you to be able to autograph a few of those, I'm, I'm thinking, of uh, square one. My, 
It'd be my pleasure, David. But you, 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 and I'd really be happy to do that. But you hit on a very, very important thing, the relationship of the microbiome to emotional health and depression. There are clear cut many studies now showing that in patients who are depressed and chronic anxiety, their microbiome actually changes so that the specific species and organisms in the gut are very different in people who have a well-balanced brain and mental health versus those who are depressed. And that by nurturing the right microbiome, it is therapeutic in terms of depression and anxiety. So this whole area is just exploding with knowledge and, and, and studies and, and how to manipulate emotional health through your gut. It's the gut brain connection. We're all familiar with the mind body connection, but it's the gut brain connection through the vagus nerve, the bi-directional flow between the brain and the gut and the gut and the brain with the neurotransmitters, the uh, inflammation with uh, immunity are all, it would be a great topic to discuss in detail at a future meeting. Absolutely. That um, things such as the link between uh, diabetes and Alzheimer's, sometimes re increasingly referred to as type three diabetes, yes. um, how we affect that. There's lots of things that, that all of us here at Actives, whether we know about it or not, through our, through our products, find ourselves really at the forefront, the cutting edge of a lot of really, really interesting scientific research. So I'm grateful for that. Again, thank you, Dr. Maroon. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us. We appreciate your knowledge, your experience, and, and appreciate you for being part of the Actis family. Our pleasure. So um, on behalf of Andrew,